There never has been, and probably never will be, an American car quite as iconic as the Ford Mustang. Everyone knows what a Mustang is. Every single person. It is our country's most popular sports car, and it has been for a very long time. If you've ever owned a Mustang, you already know that this upsets people. Some dude driving some car that wants to race you at every stoplight. Because with popularity comes attention, and with attention comes competition. Now I'm not saying that the Mustang is better than the Camaro or the Challenger or whatever. What I am saying is that the Mustang GT has effectively and honestly earned its reputation as an American icon. This is the left pedal, and today we're going to get behind the wheel of this premium package 2019 Ford Mustang GT. The Mustang was a car that everybody wanted almost immediately after it came out in the 60s. It was a whole new type of sports car at the time. It would turn out to be a good thing for the world of speed, because after seeing the Mustang's success, every other car company in America wanted to hop on the pony car train. With all the new competition, the Mustang would have to get better and better to stay relevant. After half a century of constant improvement, it's safe to say that it's become a pretty amazing machine. The Mustang was released to the public in 1964. You know how many they've sold since then? 10 million. They have sold 10 million Mustangs. That's a pretty impressive number. While we're on the topic of impressive numbers, let me throw these at you. This car in particular is powered by a 5 liter V8 engine, which is a classic for these cars, except that this one is making 460 horsepower and 420 foot-pounds of torque. Realistically, a lot of that energy is lost in the transmission and the axles, but regardless, it's a fast car. The Ford is capable of accelerating from a complete stop to 60 miles per hour in 4 seconds. Now the one we're driving today is an automatic convertible, which is basically the slowest combination for the GT. The 5 speed coupe is capable of braking below the 4 second mark, and can blast through the quarter mile in 12 and a half seconds. I like all the options in this car except for the transmission. If I were buying one for myself, it would be a convertible GT Premium with a stick shift. Now the next guy might not like convertibles. If you were going to buy this car with the intent of taking it to the track, you're probably going to want a hardtop. One of the best things about these cars is that you've got a lot of options to choose from and a massive used market. My girl's first Mustang was a V6 automatic. Mine was a 4.6 liter 5 speed. I've got friends with GT500s and I've got friends with EcoBoosts. They make a Mustang for just about everybody. I know we in the car community like to look down on lower trims than ours. Everybody does. Faster cars come with bragging rights. But Ford was very smart in making the Mustang a car that anyone can obtain. Someone is buying your least favorite Mustang right now. And there's a very good chance that it's going to give that person a lifelong attachment to the name. The one we have today is a perfect beach cruiser with enough power to get up and go. The interior is hard not to love. To be completely honest with you, I prefer the interior in the older S197 chassis. I think the new models have lost some of the flair, but what they lack in nostalgia, they make up for with technology. This is a GT Premium, so it's got a built-in navigation system, heated steering wheel, and a fully digital dash. The exterior, like the interior, is transitioning from the more retro feel of the previous generation. It's an attractive car, with the long hood and iconic triple tail lights it's pretty much a perfect representation of what the car is supposed to be. You see this bright red Mustang GT driving down the road with the top down? You know the driver is having a good time. Ford has found a good middle ground with the size of this car. It still feels like a big beefy American pony car, but at the same time, it's small enough to handle, and it actually feels surprisingly nimble. This one, even though it's a convertible, doesn't actually feel that heavy. The soft top GT is somewhere in the 3,800 pound range. That's relatively heavy for a performance vehicle, but in these cars, it's almost better that way. The last car I reviewed was a Camaro SS. And while the Mustang and Camaro are direct rivals, it's a different driving experience. The Camaro had a little more low end torque due to its larger engine. No lie, that was a performance. 
regardless, even with a smaller engine, the Mustang is better for doing muscle car stuff. These cars break traction with little to no effort. Sometimes they break traction if you're making an effort not to. The Mustang and independent rear suspension makes for a unique combination. The vehicle is built for doing donuts. It begs you to test its limits. We weren't allowed to burn the tires off the test car, but I've said it before and I'll say it again, the sole purpose of the Ford Mustang is to make driving fun. The back seats are not super comfortable, but they do the job. Putting the top down makes them bearable, to say the least. But you'll find that people don't mind that much. The Mustang, especially the convertible, is a car for taking out your friends. It's a car for making memories in. It's hard to ride in this thing and not immediately want one. Everyone, even the import dudes, can't help wanting to take it for a spin when the opportunity comes up. Just so they can know what a Mustang feels like. Over half a century of happy owners have made these cars a staple in automotive history. The Mustang does just about everything you want a car to do. With a huge used market and countless combinations of trims and options, Mustang ownership has a very low barrier to entry. There is a Mustang for everyone, and as a result, basically everyone wants one. It's an obtainable dream car. No two ways about it.